Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of King of the Hill, I want to talk about the Master Thief of the Thieves. There's not really a whole lot to say about the Master Thief herself. Her talent is simple, to draw a treasure card. The question the Master Thief asks is what do we do with them? The Master Thief is very hard to synergize because we have no idea what we are getting with a blind treasure draw. I mentioned before how the treasures are quite lopsided in value. You have some that are pretty useless, some that are in line with average cards, and a few that are pretty ridiculous when spammed. But spamming treasures is something the dwarves do, not the thieves, and outside of pairing them together, it's really hard to say what faction the Master Thief will want as a partner unless they help bring her into play. Instead, the thieves want to make themselves better, and Master Thief does that by drawing a treasure card every turn. Even if your hand gets full, you can always discard your worst treasures, and there really isn't any shortage of candidates for that. In the past, I've mentioned that there are three main thieves strategies, with one slight variation on the third. If you haven't seen the swipe video, they are to play treasures as actions, defense the treasures, and to power up Cat Burglar. But as I've spent significant time with thieves lately, I really believe that the Cat Burglar strategy is the only solid one, with the others playing a minor role at the end. You cannot plan on playing treasures in any meaningful, long-term capacity because you don't know what you are getting, and it waters down the other two strategies, which are much more likely to be impactful. But let's look at all of our other options for treasures, no matter how big or small, to determine the Master Thief's value. At best, you can expect to fence 3 VP in treasures. The thieves have no card draw, and although smuggling can shuffle in your fences, it's going to be hard to get both thieves more than once and I definitely don't see you getting to smuggling again without help from your partner. 3vp is certainly significant, but this is slow and takes 6 treasures. Treasures are hard to come by, even with the Master Thieves' help, and would be hard to do so in less than 4 turns. It probably takes 4 to 6, and you wouldn't be competing much on bases in the meantime. So fencing is good for adding in extra points here or there, but as the sole faction strategy, it isn't really reliable. I can, and have, gotten more VP by winning bases by myself with Cat Burglar, or by edging out opponents and stealing the base out from under them. And I still have the treasures in hand, in case I decide to fence them later. But what about Potion Bandolier, their other double feature? There are only a select few cards that give plus 3 power as an action, so this seems powerful, and it is more powerful than Happy Zapper's boost, which just requires a generic card. Potion Bandolier requires a treasure card to discard instead, which Master Thief can provide. But that still requires your action, whereas Leader 2 can give plus 2 power for free sans action. When I start using Changer Bots as examples for better cards, you know you're in trouble. I can use that action as a means to backstab someone, but that's only slightly better than Blaster Master, which again requires a generic card, and I know many players find Blaster Master underwhelming and it still requires your action. So while Master Thief does seem to enable you to play better actions, those actions are admittedly weaker versions of two cards that are both double features elsewhere. The rest of the actions don't use treasures, and Master Thief has no impact on the pickpocket other than making up for their general lack of utility. So if the treasures themselves are underwhelming, and fence is slow and limited, that really only leaves serving the Cat Burglar as the true purpose for thieves. Turing Jedi once tried to point out that, if you were the only person with access to treasures, you could spam Wishing Ring every turn if it's the only card in the deck. However, I countered with, if you drew all the other treasures, shouldn't you have won with the Cat Burglars already? Also, Aliens. Way faster, way more fun. Instead, I chose to focus on the Cat Burglar, the real powerhouse of the faction. In this context, the Master Thief adds a power counter every turn, like Air Doctor, but without the power creep, and every treasure card is actually up to 3 power since every Cat Burglar can reveal it. Of course, that's an all or nothing type of power counter, which isn't automatically better since it makes it hard for the thieves to compete in the meantime, and your hand tends to get quite large. In my swipe video, I mentioned how the dwarves allow you to use your better treasures mid-game so that they can get them back for their eventual Cat Burglar reveals but we shouldn't be designing factions that exist to only have one partner, so maybe a closer look at the treasures is necessary. 
if all the Master Thief does is draw treasures, then the synergy thieves provide, from a Master Thief perspective, is inherently tied to the value of treasures themselves. Of the 22 treasures, 8 of them are standard actions. That would bring the Disco Dancers into focus, and copying Potion of Idiotic Bravery, or Halitosis, is certainly interesting. Even Crossbow, depending on the minion alignment. But the other 5 cannot be copied, and if you were just looking to copy power or movement, you have no shortage of candidates who can provide greater guarantees and greater benefits than the thieves do. You'd have better success with the fact that treasures can be played on a minion, which is a form of directly affecting a minion. It turns out to be a great mix for both the luchadors and the musketeers. The luchadors want to play actions on other players' minions, and all of the play on minion actions can be played on any minion, not just your own. This opens up a lot of opportunities, whether it's buffing up minions that you know you can destroy with Kappa Roja anyway. Having the extra treasures also benefits the Musketeers, as you now have a reason to play the mid-game since you get more of a benefit. A card like Boots of Butt Kicking takes on new meaning when it becomes a way of converting actions or triggering card draws, draws the thieves desperately need. Out of all the treasure cards, I think the Master Thief wants to draw a Potion of Redundancy Potion to give you effectively a second Master Thief. With double treasure draw, you'd get access to a few great treasures and greatly power up your cat burglars. With the right setup, you can be facilitating a very powerful blossom play. Four of the cards have to be those specific cards, but the other six can be treasures, any treasures, and the potion of redundancy potion combo can add two more treasures for six more power. At eight treasure per cat burglar, each cat burglar is an 11 and can be played anywhere. Alternatively, you can create the same play with Innsmouth and spreading the word, while solving the problem of not having minions to play mid-game. In fact, if you are willing to sacrifice one of those treasure cards in hand, you can substitute a return to the sea to get the cat burglars back, who can be even stronger next turn. Notice, in most of these synergies, it's the cat burglar we're talking about, and while I'm okay with the bottom-up factions in some instances, this isn't really one of them. The Master Thief just seems too limited, either requiring a perfect pairing or a heavy dependency on cat burglars with no searching or card draw to get to them. And if the Master Thief is destroyed or cancelled, the faction really suffers. That's why this minion is underwhelming for me. She supports, rather than drives the faction strategy, and it really hurts to say that, because I am a thief. I mean, my name is Bandit. Their faction symbol is literally my brand. Twice. So while this is a good minion to get early, you aren't guaranteed the payoff, and that's why I find the Master Thief to be lacking. Oh well, they can't all be fantastic, but why did it have to be the Bandit? Thankfully, Smash Up made up for this error five expansions later, and it lets me sleep at night. In the meantime, I'll continue to believe that the Cat Burglar is the true driving force behind the faction, the true King Minion, and the margin isn't really even close. There are other cards that can get you treasures and better treasures, but only the Cat Burglar has the reason to use them. So my opinion is that the Master Thief is limited and not the main focus of the faction, but you may have a different take on her. Let me know your opinions in the comments. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.